In this video, let's talk about Cisco VRF Lite. Let's have some fun with this. I don't promise that this will work at the end of this video, so I may have to make a second one to get this to work. If we come here to our Cisco modeling labs, we have a setup already. Now, these routers are not configured. I just put names on them so that you could see what we're going to do. So the section in the set in the middle here, provider west, provider east, it's a setup to mimic a provider network, a small provider at that, because this setup really may not be used by a true large provider. It might be used by a small small local provider or it may be used internally in your company. But this we're just representing so that we can learn a technology. So the provider only has their internal equipment, but they connect to different customers. So here I've named one customer, Star Wars West. So Star Wars has two locations, Star Wars West, Star Wars East. And then we have Star Trek West, Star Trek East, and they all come in on the same provider network. So let's start configuring this and here let's go into the provider equipment and like I mentioned it only has the names it has no configuration so if we do a show IP interface brief if there's anything from previous labs then I'll erase it but nope there isn't anything so the idea will be that both customers will use the same IP addressing and if you're familiar with IP addressing on Cisco equipment you know that you cannot use the same IP address on two different interfaces if we look here provider West the connection to Star Wars West is G00 the connection to Star Trek West is G01 so if I come in here Let's just use a 10.1.1 network on the west side and we'll use a, that's what we'll use here. And then for the east side, we'll use, let's say 10.2.2 network. And that way we'll keep it um, interesting here. So let's uh, always use dot one for the provider network. So if, it, if you've ever ordered a circuit, the provider will tell you, okay, this is the IP address range. You can use any of these. Our end will be this IP address. So for this network, let's say that the provider IP addresses will always end in dot one. So dot one will always be a provider to the customer. So the customer always points to 10.1 here and dot one this way. So provider network is 255.255.255.0. And I forgot to put the little address word here. Okay, now. And then we'll do GI0001, I should say. And up arrow, and we'll put the same IP address. And what happens here? Nothing, right? So let's go back to interface, no shut. And zero, zero will no shut it as well. Okay. And now you see, it tells you that it overlaps with gigabit ethernet zero one. Incorrect IP address assignment. As you see, we cannot have the same IP address or can we? Let's go to here and let's do a no IP address on this one. Okay. So let's go back to interface G01. Let's do a, um, uh, the IP forwarding first for the VRF. IP VRF and we have to give it a name. So let's call this one Star Wars. 
and these are case sensitive so you have to remember that and if we look at it ipvrf star wars and you can give it a description and let's call this let's put the description may the force be with you that's the description let's create the second vrf and what this does this will separate our routing so vrf stands for it depends it could either be the v could represent virtual or vpn so for now let's just say it means virtual routing forwarding or route forwarding and that's that's the general idea let's do create ip vrf star trek and this will be for our star trek customer and let's put the description and what do you think the description will be for this let's put beam me up scotty and there we go let's do a show run and there you go you see ipvrf star trek ipvrf star wars and it's very simple we go into interface g00 so let's configure just our star wars customer he called us up he wants uh this service provided to him this connectivity from west to east so let's do that very simple and let's do a show run here on this interface so that we can capture some things show run so it has the ip address but it's in a shutdown state so if i come here and i do a ip forwarding PRF forwarding and we put in the command here the question mark you'll see that it tells you the VRFs that are configured here or it could be a new one so Star Trek Star Wars and war just means a new one that you want to create Cisco iOS is interesting the command line because not every command that accepts a VRF will list out for you the VRFs that you've already configured which is interesting you would think hey you know i've configured this it should be there but no it is not so let's call this one star wars okay and you see what it says here it says it removed the ip address so that happens every single time that you configure a vrf so you have to place back the ip address so now we do ip address 10.1.1.1.255.255.255.0 and let's no shut it so now if we go into the interface G01 let's do IPVRF forwarding you get up arrow and find the command that you had there already and just change it star trek and now let's place the, the same IP address 255.255.255.0 as you can see it didn't fail this time we know shut it and we are done with that configuration so now if we go to star wars west the provider tells us here you can use this ip address and it gives us the range and here we'll just put 10.1.1.2 the secondary ip address on the or the second ip address in the list and a dot zero no shut it no vrf configuration nothing just this ping 10.1.1.1.1 and it works okay now we come over to provider east side and we do the same thing. And we'll do the IP forwarding, IP VRF first, same VRF, Star Wars. And let's question mark it so that you could see. So there's nothing there, Star Wars. And we'll do IP VRF Star Trek. Okay, and now we go into interface G00. And 
Okay, we do it IP40, IPVRF40. And we look at our options and it gives us Star Wars. And remember the reason we're putting this is because G00 is the one that's connected to Star Wars East. We do not want to put the wrong VRF pointing to Star Trek East. And now we put the address in here. 10 that uh, let's use two. 10 that two that two that one. Two five five two five five two five five that zero. And hit enter, no shut it. By the way, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be making more videos about this and continuing on with different topics. By the way, too, this will be a longish video. There's so many moving parts. Even though VRF Lite is a simple configuration, it does require quite a bit of, of config on our part to get it up and running. So here we put IP VRF forwarding. And here we want Star Trek. And now we put the IP address 10.2.2.2.1. And we know shut this. And we should be good to go. Even though we're configuring this for customer Star Trek, we're not going to do anything right now for customer Star Trek. It's common for a provider to have all these interfaces set up. And then when a new customer comes on board, they don't have to configure anything. They just have to tell you, hey, we're ready to go and no shut the interface. Or it might be the same thing in your environment. You configure all these interfaces and you're just ready to go. Now let's go to Star Wars East. And here we will do the same configuration. There will be no, nothing but IP address configuration on G00. So IP address will be 10.2.2.2, 255, 255.0. No shut. And that is it. Ping 10.2.2. 2.2.2. Which is the provider east IP address. And we have connectivity there. So that's it, we don't need to do anything else. So now we have to configure this between provider west and provider east, G02 on both sides. And the way we're gonna separate the network here is by creating sub interfaces. So interface G02 is not what we want to configure. That's the main interface. We have to create a sub interface and you've probably seen that in other videos like on router on a stick configuration and so forth. So let's pick a sub interface. Now company policy might dictate what sub interface numbers you could use. It may have a standard where they say, okay, for, for our customer VRF configuration, you have to start at 100 or 200 or, or whatever number or this a voice traffic may flow through 100 uh, internet traffic can flow through this other sub interface so let's do that let's uh let me see what can we use here let's use sub interface 100 let's make it simple g02.100 and here as well, we have to specify IPVRF forwarding because this one will represent Star Wars. There we go. And in the same, we put an IP address. Let's see, let's make this very distinct there. So let's just use 22.22.22.1. 255, 255.255.0. And look at what one message we get here. Configuring IP routing on a LAN sub interface is only allowed if that sub interface is already configured as part of an IEEE 802.10 or 802.1Q or ISM. So in a previous video, we saw that we have to do encapsulation 
and we'll do that one Q and we'll, we have to specify the VLAN it's customary that the VLAN matches the sub interface and that could be your company policy as well so we'll use VLAN 100 and now up arrow and add the IP address and that's configured now let's use something else for Star Wars interface G02 dot what can we use here let's see um, let's just use 200 keep it simple and remember we cannot just add an IP address so if we want to do IP forwarding here I just up arrow to save some time Star Trek let's add the IP address here and we get the same error again remember and now we have to do the encapsulation and here's where you have to be concerned here's a gotcha you don't want to use the same VLAN you have want to use the new one so it'll be VLAN 200 to match the interface now now we can add the IP address and you see these IP address overlap I mean they're actually duplicate IP address basic troubleshooting tells you you can't have duplicate IP addressing on a system on a network you get errors but here because we're basically separating or creating two distinct networks on here so one other step that we have to do is that we have to go into the main interface and do a no shut and now let's do show IP interface brief and make sure everybody's up and running so zero zero is up up zero one up up and you see gigabit ethernet zero two no ip address but it's up up and these have the same ip address so now we have to go over to provider east and do the same thing interface g02 g02.100 IP VRF forwarding and let's do a question mark here okay so it appears so remember this is Star Wars it's good to draw it all out so that you have it clear in your head what goes where because it's so easy to to get confused and if you're on a new network it's no problem you set it up if something doesn't work then you just start all over so I don't promise that this is gonna work at the end of this video I might have to come back later and create a new video and get this working but we'll see we will see so encapsulation let's do the same thing dot one Q and we put the VLAN we do 100 and let's put the IP address so this is 10 dot no this is 22.22.22.2 remember the other side is that one okay now let's go to interface G02 and 200 I think is what we said just to it doesn't have to be the same but it's good to configure it the same way so let's uh, do encapsulation here will be dot 200 not dot 200 just encapsulation is the VLAN is 200 because that's what it's asking for when you do a question mark it just wants to know the VLAN done and am I missing so oh, I'm missing the forwarding IP forwarding track Star Trek and we now need to put the same IP address so you now here you could just up arrow and remember we need to turn on the main interface so no shut okay let's do a show IP interface briefing to make sure we're not missing anything so zero zero up up same IP address on both of these that's fine zero two is up up and it's fine here perfect so this would mean that I should be able to ping across right so let's ping across from provider east 22.22.22 let's ping to 22.1 okay and now pings are not working what happened take a moment there think about it 
I'm going to give you the answer. And please subscribe. Don't forget about that. I really need you guys to subscribe. Okay, so that's enough time. You could pause the video if you want to keep thinking about it. But there is a specific reason about this. If we do a show IP route, what do we see? We see nothing. The thing is that now when you do VRFs, whether it's VRF Lite or whether you do VRF in a, a VGP or MPLS setup, you now have VRFs. So if we do a ping question mark, you can see that now there is a thing called VRF. So let's do VRF. And here's one of the areas that I mentioned earlier. So you do ping VRF and you do question mark and you don't get any options. You, you configured two VRFs on this one, Star Wars and Star Trek, but now they don't appear. In other commands, they show you the, the VRFs that are available. But anyway, just something to keep in mind. Ping VRF Star Wars. So this does add a, a bit of extra steps and and it's happened to me many times where I say, why is this not working? Why is this not working? And then it's just, hey, forgot to put this. Now is this going to work? Let's see. Yes, it worked. And we do the same thing with Star Trek. So let's see if Star Trek works. Yes, it does. So let's do a ping VRF. I just want to show you something real quick here. Uh, I'm going to do Star Trek. And look at that. It says unable to find VRF. The reason is, is this flows just like Linux does. It's case sensitive. So the only way you could do this is if you follow the same principle. This is uh, caps. So when I do this, now it tells me what IP do I want. Okay, I don't want to do anything there now. So we have connectivity from here to here. Right? So in order to get up to this network, we would have to change a couple things. Since we don't have any routing protocols today, we're just doing static IP addressing. So I, I would have to put certain static IP addressing in our network. It's not common for a provider network to have static, static addressing. It could be common for you to have static IP. The provider may say, okay, just put a default address coming from your network into our network and from this network here, and we'll take care of the center and we'll provide the connectivity for you there. So in order for this to work, we'll have to do two IP addresses. So I'm going to do an IP route and let's do a question mark here. And once again, you see the VRF at the bottom. So you have to do IP route VRF. And once again, this is another one of those commands where it just doesn't pop up the with the, <laughs> whatchamacallit, the name of the VRF for you, the ones that you have configured. Other commands, like I said, they show you the VRFs. Okay, IP route VRF Star Wars. We're going to do a static route, default route, all the way across, and we're going to come out the other end. So it was 22.22.22.2. That's the IP address for provider. Oh, I'm on provider east here. So, okay, I have to go the other way. So from provider east to west, I have to use this IP address. Correct? There we go. But I also have to do one for Star Trek. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. I really don't know. Let's see. So there we go. So it allows that for me. So let's see. So I should be able to do a show IP route. And I should see it. But I don't. Why not? Let's check this out. Show IP route. And once again, you see down here you have VRF. So you have to put VRF. And I tell you, this this gets you all the time. It's it's just common. It, it's easy to forget. So here we go. We see that we have a static ground. And we see all of our connected. And we do the same thing for Star Trek. And it looks just the same. 
All right, so now we go to Provider West. And let's do the same thing. We'll do a static route, IP route, VRF, Star Wars. And we'll do a, a default route. And we'll now we'll use 22.22.22.2 because it's going from west to east. And up arrow, bring it back a little bit and just put Star Trek. All right, so we have those two there. And same thing, if we do a show IP route, we don't see anything. Show IP route, Star Trek. And I messed up by doing that. So we'll, we won't wait for that. We'll actually now go to Star, oh, there we go, I finished right away. Show IP route, BRF. And now we can place this in there. No editing, just flowing through here. Okay. So let's go to Star Wars West and the provider tells you, hey, please, Star Wars, create a default route into our network. IP route, once again, it's just uh, all zeros. Basically, this means anything that you send us, send it to Provider West Network. Now, you could choose to just use G00 and specify that physical interface, or you could just put the IP address. I'm going to put the IP address. And I almost made a boo-boo. Oh, no, no, I'm on, stop. I'm on the customer equipment. <laughs> That's fine. So the customer is not aware of any VRFs. So we don't have to put any VRFs there. And that's the thing, when you're on a network, it, it gets easy to, it becomes very easy to get confused on which equipment you are. So always make sure you're on the right equipment or you cause an outage. Okay, so that's sending everything over. Can we ping 10.1.1 now? We can, can we ping 10.2? The other side was 10. Dot, yeah, 10.2.2.2. Dot two dot two. <laughs> and it seems like we can't. So one way that we can monitor this, let me do a, oops, let me use logging console. All right. Okay, and let's do a debug. Debug. IP. Is it ICMP? Yes. Okay. There we go. We'll just do that. Come back over here. Let's send the pings across and let's see what happens. Okay. So they're receiving it. They're sending the reply. Did I get it? I did not. So let's figure this out. Well, I put the static route here, but I did not put a static route here. Correct? So let's take care of that. So let's go configuration here. IP route 000. That's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And we're going to use 10.2.2.1. .2 Correct? Let me make sure that's it. Do show run. Sometimes I forget the IP address interface G00. Yes, so that's it. So I should I should be able to ping ping 10.2.2.1. Yes, I can ping it. Okay. So let's go back to Star Wars. And let's try to ping that guy. Hey, now I could ping him. Very cool, huh? Now, since these are all the same IP addresses, how do I know that it's really talking to this guy? Well, that was one test. I ran a debug here. You could see the packets coming and you could see it replying. But with that said, I haven't configured this customer. See, there's nothing on this router. 
Is there anything on this router? Okay, this router is configured. So let's see, show IP interface brief. What does this have? It's got nothing. So let's start configuring this guy. Interface G0, zero, zero. And this will be, it's the same IP address, IP address 10.2.2.2, 255, 255.0. And we'll no shut this, no shut. We'll come over here now. This should be ready to go. It might take a little bit. See, this guy's not even configured. It's got nothing on it. So host name, we'll call this Star War Star Trek West. Probably in LA somewhere. There we go. Interface G00, IP address. And this is taking the same IP address as Star Wars West. But they don't know each other. They probably don't even like each other. Different companies. And here we go. We're up 10.1.1.1. And it could ping the provider. So when the provider brings up the circuit, he'll tell, can you ping us? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Your connectivity is all set. Can you ping across? So let's see. Can I ping across? Ping 10.2.2.2. Can it ping it? Well, it seems like it can't. Hmm. Why is that? Why, 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 why? Hmm. Okay. Let's think about this. So. And here's my buy me a coffee link. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, please. I really appreciate it love espresso so here we go let's do this we have you remember you have to do default route so ip route 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 and it's exactly the same one as we put on star wars east hmm. Let's come over here now. Same thing. What am I typing here? IP route 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 .0 0.0.0.0.0.0. And we're going out the provider east. Now we should have connectivity. Let's ping 10.1.1.1. Let's ping and uh, the other end star trek 2 is 10.1.1. And how do I know that it's pinging this guy? Okay, let's we'll just set up debugs. Debug IP ICMP. And I'm going to send a ping across. Ping 10.1.1 10.2.2.2. .1 .1, it's successful. How do I know it? And I forgot to turn on login. Logging console. Now it should come across. Let's take a look. Ping across again. Bam. You see the echo reply is being sent. And let's clear this out a little bit because you say, well, it could be that it's pinging this guy as well. How do I know it's broken? Well, let's do it again. Ping. Does this guy see it? Nope. Does this guy see it? Yep, there you go. So as you can see, it did work. Oof, I was sweating there, sweating bullets, thinking, man, this is not gonna work. So I was not gonna edit this video at all. Just gonna provide it live like that. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Please uh, hit that notification bell and I will be making more videos in a future video I'll see how this applies with OSPF, with EIGRP, with RIP. We'll configure more advanced VRF with MPLS, BGP, and we'll see how we go from here. But I appreciate so much you sticking around and watching this. Uh, hopefully you learned something. It's a long video, but VRF light, even though it's a light, 
it does require some configuration and many steps and i just wanted to help you to see the different uh, nuances of configuring this well till next time have fun